Uh, let's do another example together. Here we have this mechanism. It has four, uh, three parts. The first one is uh, this hydraulic cylinder. Point A is moving to the right with a constant velocity of two meter per second. A, B is pinned to the piston at point A. From the other side, it is pinned to, the, to another bar at point B. And this bar is pinned to the ground at point O. So whenever A moves to the right, A, B is going to move and rotate, and also B is going to move. So this bar is going to rotate as well. Now the question is, if velocity of A is 2 meter per second, what's going to be the angular velocity of this link? Let's assume this is going to move, this is going to rotate in this direction. And the question is, what is this omega OB? OB, the length of it is R, and at the moment it is in the horizontal direction. And this cylinder, it is in the horizontal direction too. And we know the geometry, we know the length of L and also R. So if you um, think about this problem after five minutes, four minutes, um, I don't know, 10 minutes, we can do it together. So I assume you did that. How we can relate the velocity of A to the angular velocity of this link? This is my information and this is my question, right? So I need to relate them to each other. How can I do that? Um, I can do that by relating the velocity of A to B, right? I know the velocity of A, it is two meter per second. And velocity of B, we can write it in terms of omega OB, right? Look at this link. It is pinned to the ground at point O. And B is a point on this link, right? So when the link rotates with angular velocity of omega, the velocity of B is going to be in this direction. And the magnitude of the velocity is going to be R times omega. So velocity of point B is going to be R times omega OB downward. So if I find the velocity of B, I'm going to be able to find omega OB. Now, how can I relate this unknown to my known? Obviously, you can relate them together by um, writing the relative velocity equation between A and B. So, velocity of B is equal to velocity of A plus angular velocity cross AB. Right? This is the relative velocity equation that we learned. But what is this omega? Omega, this angular velocity, is the angular velocity of the rigid body that A and B, both of them are on that rigid body, which means this part. So if I assume the angular velocity of this link is omega, let's call it omega AB to make it more clear, this is going to be omega AB. It is different than angular velocity of this link. Each rigid body has its own angular velocity, right? So we have two rigid bodies here, and each of them has its own angular velocity. Now, um, if you look at this equation carefully, um, velocity of B, we know it's going to be R times omega OB in the negative J direction. I call this direction x and this one j, uh, y. Uh, velocity of b is going to be negative r omega um, ob in the j direction is equal to velocity of a. Velocity of a is known. It is 2 meter per second in the i direction. Plus omega ab. We don't know what is the omega of this link, <coughs> so it is unknown, but we know it's going to be in the k direction, right? Positive or negative, we don't care. After solving this equation, uh, this problem, we are going to find omega a, b too.
So omega a b is unknown, but it is in the k direction. <coughs> Cross product to a b. So we need to write a b in vector form, and um, to write this a b in vector form, uh, we know. Uh, the J component of it is going to be 160. Um, and the I component of it is going to be L times cosine of this angle. Right? So if I call this angle, let's call this angle theta. Theta, um, uh, sine of theta is going to be 160 divided by L which is 180, so we are going to be able to find that angle. Let's write it here. Theta is equal to sine inverse of 160 divided by 180. It's going to be 62.7 degree. Okay. So after finding that angle, now let's go back to our equation. Uh, I'm, I was trying to write AB in the vector form. So AB in the vector form is going to be L times cosine of theta in the I direction, L times sine of theta in negative J direction. So let's write that down. It is L, <coughs> L times cosine of theta in the I direction, negative L times sine of theta in the J direction. Okay. Now look at this equation. What is unknown here? Omega OB, that's unknown, and omega AB, right? We know the rest of parameters. Um, because this is a vector equation, if I separate I and J terms, I'm going to be able to find both unknowns. So let's do this cross product before, before separating I and J terms. Um, K cross I is J, so I'm going to have L times omega AB, times cosine of theta in the j direction. k uh, cross j is um, a, a negative i, we have another negative here, so positive plus l times omega ab times sine of theta in the i direction. Now I can separate i and j terms in two sides of this equation. So. For i, I have nothing here, so 0 is equal to, in the other side, I have 2 here. And also I have L omega AB times sine of theta. So from this equation, I'm going to be able to find omega AB. For J, I have negative R omega OB. In the other side, I have this part, L times omega AB times cosine of theta. Two equations and two unknowns. From the first one, I can find omega AB. If you plug it here, I'm going to be able to find omega uh, OB. And if you do it correctly, omega OB is going to be equal to 8.59 radian per second. 